Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, Global TME over here at HP Aruba Networking. Today, we are going to dive into Stackstorm, and it's going to be a deep dive. It's going to be lots of twists and turns. Stay with me on this one. This is the second series after the Aruba Restful Automation Series. So glad you made it to that. We love all the views. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what we're going to cover here is all about Stackstorm and how we can use Stackstorm to enrich our lives. Now, this episode is going to be a little lecture. I got just a few slides. I'm going to show you some housekeeping stuff that we want to take care of. But after that, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the Stackstorm barrel. And we're going to learn all about Stackstorm and we're going to have fun doing it. So let's get started. Before we get too far into this, I just want to show you the difference between automation and orchestration. They're two different things. Automation is a repetitive task that I can make something simple and go um, configure a hundred servers, right? So it does it the same way over and over and over again. Orchestration has some decision making built into it. So if um, a, a certain variable is a certain amount or threshold or something, it's going to go do something else. So it has some logic built into that. And Stackstorm is a perfect perfect solution for implementing this decision-based processing. When we look at Stackstorm, it's truly this thing we call if this, then that. We even call it IFTTT automation, right? So if this happens, then go do that. It's really simple. And so with Stackstorm, any process that we can, we can flowchart, we should automate because we have the power to do that. We take actions in response to events. It's an event-driven framework, okay? So that's, we wanna be able to use this event, the event-based system to see when something happens, maybe a new server got, or a new host got added in the vCenter or something, that's an event. And based on that event, if I hear that event, I can go do something about it. Maybe go build a VLAN on the network. So when we dive into the Stackstorm Automation Framework, all this stuff down at the bottom is sending out all kinds of data. They have RESTful APIs that you can just go in, do a bunch of HTTP gets, get whatever information you want out of here or use webhooks. But there's a ton of information down here and there's a ton of events happening. So we can listen for those events with something called a sensor. We can write a sensor in Stackstorm to listen for things like, oh, somebody tweeted something. That's an event. So based on that event, I could load a trigger. And when the trigger becomes hot, the rule becomes active. And the rule says, if this trigger happened, then I wanna go in and run some actions that are associated with this rule. I'm basically gonna run one action and that action could be a single action from a single integration pack, like load the resulting information into a Mongo database or something, or open up a ticket in ServiceNow. But we can have these complex workflows that we can pull actions, which have over 13 different runner types. They can be local scripts, remote scripts. There's just all different types of them. We'll get into that later. But I want you to know that um, for my runner types, I'm using Python. And so we use Python to take action on the things below. And like I said, we can take an action from one pack, push it off to an action of another pack. So we may see something happen, go to Ansible and run an Ansible playbook, right? And so when we get done with that playbook, we can go look for something else and say, oh, we better go open a ServiceNow ticket. So all this keeps going over and over again. We listen for something. If it sets an event, we kick up a rule, drives the action or the workflow, and changes the world below us. That's Stackstorm's framework. When we look in our data center, there's a ton of information out there. Everybody's got an API. And I could write the code to listen to all those different APIs. And then I would have to write the code to go do something else to some other thing. I don't wanna write all that code and I don't have to when I use Stackstorm. I can use the Stackstorm integration packs that are already written to use the actions from those packs 
string them together in workflows and actually change the world, right? So here is the Stackstorm Exchange. It's exchange.stackstorm.org. Go out there and look at this. There's about 200 vendors out there waiting for you to consume this automation and put it inside your Stackstorm server. So I want you to have some knowledge of Python when we get started. At least Python data structures like classes and dictionaries and lists. I'm not going to teach you Python in this course. There's plenty of courses for that. So I want you to have this understanding. Um, you should have an understanding of the JSON data serialization format and PyMongo. Not necessary, but a GitHub account would be nice to go stash all this code you're going to write. And if you're going to write this code, you need an editor like Visual Studio Download here or Atom IO. Either one, I use Atom IO. I like it a lot. But Visual Studio has a lot of power behind it as well. And then you should be able to run Docker Desktop. I'm going to run Docker Desktop. It makes it super easy to do this. But if you don't have Docker Desktop, at least have access to some host that has Docker and Docker Compose. So if you go out to Docker Desktop, load it up, it runs on Windows or Mac. Um, other ways is the all-in-one install. Google it if you can. Docker Desktop, ding, ding, that's what we're going to use. And then we could also install Docker with um, Ansible Playbooks, Puppet, Manifest, or Kubernetes Helm Charts. We have a whole bunch of ways of getting it installed. So thank you. That's the end of the lecture. We're going to get some hands-on right away. So let's just jump into it and let's get started.